Computers are normally programmed through a sequence of precise instructions called an algorithm. An algorithm is a simple sequence of instructions. So for example, if you are doing the dishes, the algorithm you follow for doing the dishes is you pick a plate and you put it in the sink and then you rub on it and then you rinse it and then you put it to dry, then you repeat until you run out of plates. That's a simple algorithm. But how do we write an algorithm to recognize an image? For example, to distinguish a, a car from a dog. It's very difficult to even express what's different between a car and a dog. So to a computer, an image is simply a table of numbers, and each number represents the brightness of a particular pixel in the image. You know, a dog will be a table of number, and a car will be another table of number. Now, writing down an algorithm that will crunch those numbers to d distinguish cars from dogs is very, very difficult to write by hand. Cars and dogs come in all kinds of different shapes and colors and different types of backgrounds and different sizes and everything. And so it's very difficult to figure out really you know, what makes a car a car and what makes a dog a dog from that list of numbers. One thing we could do, and one of the things that people have done for many decades, is we can compare the image that we are supposed to recognize to a bunch of templates that we have memorized. Perhaps we've collected lots and lots of images of dogs and lots and lots of images of cars. And the simple thing we can do is, when an image comes in, we compare it with all the images of dogs and cars that we have. And when it matches one of the dog pictures, then we decide it's a dog. The problem with this is that it doesn't work very well because we would need a very, very, very large number of templates for this to work. We would have to have dogs in every possible position, every possible color, every possible pose, and same for all the cars in the world. So that's really impractical. It doesn't work very well. This is where machine learning comes in. Instead of programming the machine to classify cars from dogs, we will show it a lot of examples of cars and dogs and we'll, we'll train it to distinguish them. So here is a very simple way of doing this. Uh, let's say our images have nine pixels. And let's say we're not trying to distinguish uh, dogs from cars, but we're trying to distinguish the letter D from the letter C. So, so let's say D stands for dogs and C uh, stands for cars. So those are you know, black and white images. If uh, a pixel is black, it takes the value one, and if it's uh, white, it takes the value zero. So our learning machine is going to do something very simple. It's going to compute a weighted sum of the pixels. So weighted sum means that you take every pixel, you take one pixel, you multiply it by a number, and then you take the next pixel multiplied by a number. So then you get all the pixels multiplied by all those numbers, and then you sum them up. Okay, that's a weighted sum. And then you compare this weighted sum to zero. If it's larger than zero, you're going to decide it's the letter C. If it's smaller than zero, you're going to say it's the letter D. And the question now is what value to give to the weights so the weighted sum is lower than zero, and whenever you show a C, it's larger than zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to show examples of C's and D's, and we're going to have a learning procedure. And what the learning procedure is going to do is adjust all the weights in that machine. You can think of the pattern of weights as sort of a template that we're going to apply to all the examples. So how do we do this? How do we adjust the weights? So we show a C, and we tell the machine, make your weighted sum larger. And the way the machine is going to do this is that it's going to increase all the weights that C a black pixel and decrease all the weights that see a white pixel or otherwise leave them alone. Conversely, we're going to show it a D, and for the D examples, the weighted sum has to be smaller than zero. So what we're going to do there, we're going to tell the machine, make your weighted sum smaller. And the way the machine is going to do this is it's going to decrease all the weights that see a black pixel, and it's going to let the other values unchanged. In the end, you're going to have positive weights on pixels that only belong to the C, and negative weights on, only, on the pixels that only belong to the D. And that's a perfect template to discriminate C's from D's. So now, when you show a C, you compute the weighted sum. The weighted sum is larger than zero, and so it's correctly classified as C. And when you show a D, it's smaller than zero, it's correctly classified as D. So of course, in, in real life, we, all, we have more than just one example of each letter or each shape. And learning those, those templates might, be, might take more time or might be more complicated. But that's the basic principle.